All right, we welcome the internet. Matthew chapter 3. And this is where John the Baptist comes out of the wilderness and he is baptizing and he is giving them the offer of the kingdom without going through tribulation. Now you understand, I want you to understand that. In the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John doctrines taught, Jesus said that if you believe, I will not sacrifice. And of course, we are known by the Lord, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the things that happened to the Lord in them is, is already known by the Lord. Nothing surprising him. It's not, he's not going, oh, why did that happen, or how come that? He already knows all that. I understand that. But the offer of the kingdom is because the king is there. John is baptizing, manifesting Jesus to Israel. John chapter 1, verse 29 and 30. And his message is in verse 2. And saying, Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If they would have repented, if they would have believed, the kingdom would have been set up and it would have saved them the misery of Jeremiah chapter 30, Jacob's trouble. They didn't. They resisted. They rejected and landed up by the end of the stories of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They killed the Messiah. They chose the king of Caesar over <laughs> their own king because he never gave them any confidence in the tradition they were doing. The tradition was against God's commandments, and he would not ever give them any relief on that. Every time they faced off with him, he he nailed them, hypocrites, vipers. And <clears throat> the idea of it, they heard of his baptism. I'm talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes, uh, Pharisees and scribes. And they wanted to see what was going on. That's the only reason they went out there to see this. They didn't go out there. They didn't have a repentant mind. And the reason I'm telling you this, you've got to think of the same thing with Paul, our apostle, when he was Saul. Paul was not a repentant because he wanted it. He was repentant because it was shown to him. No man comes to the Father except the Son. Uh, no man comes to the Son except the Father draw him. No man comes to the Father except through the Son. They pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So Paul was going to be the preacher. But he's going to be a preacher to the heathen. And we'll look at this in a minute and break this thing down for you. But what I want you to understand is they're going out to see John because they're hearing about all this commotion going on. There are people going out there getting baptized, confessing their sins according to this. And so they go out to look and see what's going on. Now, they're not going to be impressed. This guy wears camel's hair, eating locusts and wild honey, and I imagine he smelled pretty good. And he's out there baptizing, and they're going, whoa, and this is what John says to them. Look at verse 6. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, now listen to this, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And that's a question that uh, you don't hear it preached a lot is, who warned you? Why, why did you come out here? Okay. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. That, those fruits are a, a guilt, an understanding that they've been doing wrong. They don't have that. And the reason I'm going to show you, turn to Philippians. And, I'll, and I, for time's sake, in Acts chapter 2, when Peter's preaching, he told the people that would believe and get baptized to save themselves from this untoward generation. Untoward means they're not coming to the Lord. They're not coming, okay? In Philippians chapter 3. Now you understand, Paul is as Saul of Tarsus in Acts chapter 7, 8, and 9, uh, 8 and 9, is a very popular, very known, well-known man in the Jewish religion. And here's what he says in verse 5. Circumcise the eighth day. Now that's what they, the Jews, stand on. 
If a Jew's not circumcised the eighth day, he's the same as a heathen. He's just cut away from his people. He's not part of the covenant. The circumcision is the token of the covenant. The cutting of the foreskin is the token of the established covenant. That's what it means, circumcision. Anybody uncircumcised is a stranger. That means that a, if a Jew is not circumcised by his mother or dad then he's a stranger just like the heathen around. Uh, strangers are in a position in the Bible that actually Israel becomes strangers. They're scattered, and we're not going to get into that today, but he circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, not Abraham. And the reason I'm making a point on that the thing that made them mad at Paul is he is what he said in Acts 13. Hold here. Go to 13. The battle in the east, mid-east, has nothing to do with us. The God of this world is trying to get his seed, now I'm not talking about physical, his seed, to overcome the seed of Abraham, which is Israel. Abraham had two sons, one of them out of a handmaiden, Ishmael, the other he had, Isaac. They're both legitimate sons of Abraham. Different mother, same father. The problem is, Ishmael. God did not kill him. God did not throw him away. Matter of fact, he gave him 12 tribes, just like Israel. And so you got a war that's running like this. And as it runs, and this one over here is inheritance of that little old piece of land over there called Jerusalem. Yeah, a little bit old spot. Everybody wants it. They don't give a flip about us. You know that. They get flipped about getting Israel and getting them. So they fight and they fight. We step in. All we are is strangers that are hated. We have no business being over. Well, we've got another motive. I always look at motives. It's oil. There's a lot of oil over there. Hey, there's a lot of oil here. But they don't talk about it, do they? <clears throat> but they fight. They fight. We shoot something that Ishmael, he shoots it. Isaac. It's always been that way. And people couldn't see it, but it's there. Okay? Here's what made Israel totally mad at Paul. In Acts chapter 13, verse 26, men and brethren, children of the stock of who? Abraham. Not Israel. The stock. It did not say seed. Everybody with me? Not seed of Abraham. Stock. Ishmael. Isaac. Paul is telling them that Ishmael, just like Isaac, can be saved in grace. Now, would you say Ishmael's an enemy? Yeah. Absolutely. They're enemies. Did you realize... For a Jew to say he's an enemy to God, what it take? Do you realize what it had for you to take and say, I'm lost? You'd have to deny all your religious works. You see, people don't want to talk about it. Say, what do you mean I'm lost? I go to church regularly. I've been baptized. I joined a church. Man, I, I turned from my sins. Well, maybe you did, but you still lost. I'm going to show you. Now watch. Philippians. Now you did, did you see the stock of Abraham? That's not the Gentiles, because they're the ones that fear God. Okay? Now go back to Philippians and watch. Philippians chapter four, uh, 3, verse 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin. Does he know his tribe? Benjamin is out of Rachel. She had two. Joseph and Benjamin. Is she a legitimate wife of Jacob? Yes. 
Now, all the tribes are not out of the two women, Rachel and Leah. They're out of concubines also. And there's one daughter, Dinah. So there's 12 sons, one daughter. This is a legitimate, I mean, he's bragging, folks. Come on, he's bragging. I'm out of Benjamin. I'm out of Rachel, who Jacob loved. You, you with me? I mean, you go back and read. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I apologize to you. You go back and you read this. Did Jacob love Rachel? Yes. Yes. You know why? He's a looker. But Leah was fair-eyed, tender-eyed, and gave him more children than Rachel. Matter of fact, for a long time, Rachel didn't give him any children at all. And so she bargained with concubines. <laughs> and and I, I can't see Jacob ever fighting it. You know, he, he's okay with it. But the issue is they got 12 sons. Those 12 sons are going to inherit. What are they going to inherit? Say it again. Blessed are the meek, for well, they shall inherit the earth. Tribulation and wrath are not the same. Wrath is in tribulation. Tribulation is Jacob's trouble. Is everybody okay so far? Am I doing something wrong? They're not, they're not the same, folks. Wrath comes on people that reject God. Second Thessalonians. We'll read that in a minute. Okay. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, is touching the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness of the law, what? Blameless. How are you going to convince him he's a sinner? Would he ever say, to his brethren, boy, we're ungodly and sinners and enemies. Could you get First Baptist down here, downtown, talk, go up to the preacher and say, uh, uh, everything you did is done. That's what Paul says, is it not? Do you know what done means in the scripture? Now, we're not going to translate it, but do you know what it actually means in the Scripture? A, an animal had to be sacrificed, and he had to be cleaned out. Some of the purge taken and thrown away, but the dung they would take outside the camp, because you don't want to smell it, and burn it for a sin offering. Let's see what he says. Philippians chapter 3, verse 6. Uh, seven, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Was it a great gain to be a traditionalist? Yes. yes. Yea, doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. That's the knowledge given to Paul <laughs> once he's saved. He begins to have the mind of Christ, the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but... He is not being crude, folks. He is knowing what he's talking about. Everything he ever did in his Jewish tradition should have been carried outside the camp and what? Like dung. You with me? So it does. I mean, probably I wonder what the modern translation would be. Nah, I ain't going to say it. Okay. That I may win Christ, that I might win Christ. Win Christ what? Win Christ's approval or win Christ to the people that he preaches to? You can't preach to people and exalt yourself that you are not a sinner and that you don't do this and don't And if you don't quit it, and you know, I've heard people say, you know, all have sinned. They never point themselves. Paul does. He said it chief of sinners. How can he go from as touching the right which in the law blameless to chief of sinners of 1 Corinthians 15? Or how does he do this? Turn to Romans 6. 
There has to be a day in your life when you realize what you are and what you have done will never get you to the Lord. And it won't even please Him. You're in the flesh. All right? Romans 5, verse 6. Now, do we know the difference between we and me? Do we know the difference between us and me? Do we know the difference between we and thee? Is there a difference? I mean, don't we speak pronouns? Garbage? I Take your garbage outside the camp. I thought they used garbage for fuel. Hey, by the way, the, one of the other translations uses as refuge. I have dug through many refuge piles. I do not dig in dung piles. Harold's probably got some refuge out there I'd like to dig out in his old uh, metal, you know, where he lays his metal and everything. That's refuge. But I ain't going to dig through a dunk pile. Yeah, really. People don't understand. God knows how to spell and he knows what he means. And I don't, have to help, I don't have to help God mean what he says. Let's read what he said. Now here's the man that says, it's touching your right your law blameless. This is a man that's going to tell us about wrath. This is a man that's going to show us things. Now watch. In Romans chapter 5 verse 6. For when we, who's the writer? Did he include himself? Yes. All right. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for who? The ungodly. What did he just admit as a Benjamite? The ungodly. You ever heard the first Baptist down here admit he was ungodly? <laughs> there was a time in his life when he was ungodly. Now he might tell you, oh, I was living a hard life and everything. No, but were you ungodly? Now verse 8. But God commended his love towards us. Who's included? Yes. Us. In that while we were yet. Sinners. So I don't guess Paul had to tell the Lord he's a sinner, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure he knew it. Okay, let's go on. Christ died for us. When did Christ die for us in verse 8? Come on. When did Christ die for us in verse 8? then I don't have to tell him the sinner's prayer. He knew who he was dying for. All of sin to come short of the glory of God. He knows who he's dying for. I don't have to go, Lord, I'm a sinner. That is a doctrine of the church. Don't you kid yourself. In a religious, traditional church, that is one of the things they do. Say the sinner's prayer with us. When did Christ die? What condition were you? We were yet sinners. You weren't even born. God already knew what you were going to do. Okay? Now verse 8. A 10. For if when we were... Do you understand why Paul is a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting? Do you realize that God saved the enemies of Israel with a man that was an Israelite that was an enemy also? But I said, why do you think God saved Paul? Number one, he's affluent in the Old Testament. He's a Pharisee. He's a lawyer. Okay? God shows him what the Old Testament is actually saying. He shows him that what was written in the Scripture that was hid was that Christ died for our sins. Peter said, you killed him. Paul said he died for our sins. Those that didn't want Jesus killed him. Enemies. Do you realize that later on in life they can be saved too? Yes. The message of Paul is the most wonderful message in the world. Because if it can save Paul... It can save all Israelites that rejected the Lord. Amen. Oh, people already talk about that. Well, when we were yet enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Do you believe Jesus is alive and seated at the right hand of the Father? Absolutely. <clears throat> well, then, 
That's what saved you. Amen. Now, you can't get saved. Amen. You can accept the salvation that's there. If I can get saved, that's something I'm doing. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not work, a work less than any major boast. Then why would I be told I need to walk the aisle, repent of my sins, say the sinner's prayer, turn from my sins, give my life to Christ, get baptized, join the church. Man, I'm busy, ain't I? <laughs> and all along, there's a Lord seated at the right hand of the Father that's alive, been quickened, and His quickening is what quickened me. Amen. Amen. You with me? All right, now let's read. Turn with me to uh, Psalm chapter 2. There's two kisses in the Bible, and one of them's good, one of them's bad. Same with women. One's good, and one's bad. There's two kisses in there you got to think about. You either kiss the sun, or the sun kisses you. It's like in the Godfather. I know it was you. Betrayer. Who kissed the Lord? And he's faking. He's doing it out of money. That what he's thirty pieces of silver, wasn't it? They can't identify the Lord. He has no halo around him. He's no. There's no aura around. Him. Oh my God! You'd, you'd know Jesus if he walked in the room. You know Jesus when he opened his mouth. His word will take you down. His word will make you think. His word can convict you. His word has power. I was talking to him today on Skype. Don't you understand? Do you feel sealed? Do you feel sealed laying in a hospital bed? Feel it? Oh, I'm so sealed. No, I'm so sick. Why don't you feel the seal? You don't feel it because it's something God said He did. You trust it. Amen. You trust His Word. That's what makes you so different in the world. You actually trust His Word, not what you feel, see, or handle. You trust His Word. Amen. And that ain't easy, folks. Walking by faith, not by sight, is not easy. We're living in a domestic terrorism that is so scary, we don't even know. We don't know the enemy. We can walk out of here, go get us something to eat, catch it. Later on in our life, somebody's going to try to take our guns. All this is going on. We can't fight it. We don't have to. We got some comforting verses in Paul's letters that just settle the issue and bring the peace of God on us. And when I go to bed at night, it's the same. When I get up in the morning, it's the same. Are you with me, folks? How much stock do you put in that book? You better put all your stock in that book. Because it's the truth. God cannot lie. My word will never return to me void. Jesus himself, while he was in the flesh had to depend on the very word that was written. Because he always quoted it when it was written, didn't he? It's written, it's written, it's written. He didn't say, well, I believe God wants to do this. No, he said it's written. It's written. So get in your book, get in Paul's letters, and start letting God comfort in you. Because it's written. And it won't change. Can man change it? Oh, yeah, a non-inspired version. Moth, Williams, all them things. New World Translations. New King James Bible. I didn't know God needed any help. And God got to 1611. I, I, you know, reckon he meant it? 
Reckon it's good enough for an English-speaking colony that was Columbus, 1492, 1776, right in the middle, 1611. You reckon God knew what he's doing? I'm going to get them some English-speaking letters, but that isn't all. I'm going to take the letters that were written by those apostles and by Paul, and I'm going to chapter them and number them by verse so that they can study together. That's why you're in Psalm chapter 2. I hate for you to have to count all the sentences in Psalms with 150 chapters. Now watch, Psalm chapter 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The heathen mock and made fun of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All through the scripture. Then there came a time when God turned Nebuchadnezzar loose on them. Nebuchadnezzar is a, the epitome of the heathen. And he walked right in there and stole the gold out of the richest place in the world. You think God would have let him do that if God was holding on to his people? No. And it's called the times of the Gentiles. That's when it began. The times of the Gentiles. When they would have control over Israel. And Israel would be scattered among them and everything else. And when you look in the book of Acts chapter 2, devout men out of every nation... That's not heathen. That's Jews that have been scattered and they have been born and raised with a different language. They're still Jews. You know what still makes them a Jew? If they're circumcised. Amen. Okay, now let's go on. Why do the heathen rage and people imagine the vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords. He, hath, he that sitteth in heaven shall laugh. All the shenanigans going on. You got Romans 12. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Ain't nothing going on that God don't know about and ain't nothing that God going to take care of. They can money grub and power grub and do all they want and kill all they want. And God is going to one day laugh when they can't save themselves. When they can't buy their way, they can't do anything. God will laugh. He ain't laughing right now, folks. You know, people think that the mark of the beast is the vaccine or the virus. Read your Bible. The mark of the beast is an idol. That's in Revelation. And the idol is an image of one that was killed and then got back to life. They made an image of it. And you got to bow your knee to that image and take a mark. It ain't got nothing to do with a shot or a virus. Folks, this is all man-made. Evil. Why? Power. Authority. They want it all. They'll get it all one of these days and then they'll get something they don't want. What you got to do is rest in the Lord. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 2. Rest in the Lord. For those that trouble you now, rest because tribulation is going to be given to them. Was there a time when Paul thought he'd go out alive? Yes. Was there a time when Paul knew he wasn't going to go out alive? Yes. What changed it? Well, he fulfilled the Word of God. I believe it's Ephesians and Colossians. When he fulfilled the Word of God... He said, Timothy, my time of my departure is at hand. He said, all right, now I want you to teach faithful men. And I want you to preach the word. And he said, I want you to consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding of all things. And he said, doing all this, I'm passing it to you. Take a little wine for thine open stomach and firm. You're going to have them. You're fixing to get it lowered on you. But was it going to be in the first century? No. Was it going to be in the second? No. Third, fourth, fifth. Did it look like it? When the, the, the Mussolini and Hitler and the World Wars, did it look like it's the end? My gosh, they thought in 2000 it was the end. Oh, my God, the millennial, we're going to go into the kingdom. Buy some stuff on your credit card. You'll be all right. They're still paying on that. <clears throat> That's 21 years ago, folks, and the Lord still didn't do anything. When will he do it? <clears throat> when he gets good and ready. What can I tell you? Did he say it would be all fun and games for you? No, it's not only give him had to believe on him, suffer for his sake. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. What do you hold on to? God's word. 
What did you do, you brethren? Be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Hold a grudge, build a pus. I love you. you go in churches and they want to go this way and want to go that way. And they say, why are you sitting over there? I ain't sitting over there where they're at. And then they sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Say, what were you mad about them? I don't know. It's been so long ago. I forgot, but I still don't like them. <laughs> okay. I'm mad at him. I'll never forgive him for that. Well, then you don't believe the book. <clears throat> you don't believe the book if you don't do it. You got any enemies? Well, of course you do. You're mad as fire. You're mad as fire right now, ain't you? You got loved ones. You got it's cut down in your liberty. You can't go and do things you want to used to go, and and you're just mad as fire. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. If your enemy thirst, give him a drink. That's out of our apostle, folks. Amen. That's our apostle. Be kind, tender heart, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake. He says, prefer one another. Prefer believers. You understand? Prefer them. The world's not going to discuss with you the Bible. It's not going to discuss with you what we're talking about. So prefer the ones that will. Have fellowship with them. Forsake not the fellowship. But let's read on. <clears throat> he said... I, I got anxiety so bad the other day that I got me a bag and breathed in it. I had so many people call me that were sick. And I was thinking about Paige, and I got John Sanders in Panama City in the hospital, Big John. You remember Big John? And I got a lot of friends that got it. And then I'm around it. I'm, I'm a suicidal person. I travel a lot. I'm around it all the time. A New York. I'm going through Tennessee. I'm... How, why are you doing that, Brother Jerry? Preach the word. If God can't take care of me, who is? I was scared. Anxiety. So I got me a little CO2 in there. But you know why I'm doing that for? I said, Lord, give me your peace. And I'm not going to do it like the guy, the farmer, that had the flood come in. And he said, Lord, you... They're going to flood, you're going to have to save me. But he said, then he got up on the roof. Lord, you don't have to send that boat right now. I'm, I'm okay on the roof. Finally he died. Got up to heaven. He said, Lord, why didn't you save me? I sent you a, a lifeboat. Why didn't you get in it? Mm -hmm. I sent you a Bible. Get in it. Study it. Just read it. Enjoy it. It's English. You don't have to worry about the spelling. You don't have to worry about if there's a lie in it or a contradiction. Just read it. And let God work being filled with the Spirit. And as you're filled with the Spirit, thank the Lord. Then supplicate with Him. Argue with Him. Say, I don't like the conditions that are going on. I don't like what's going on. If He answers you with a relief, that's fine. If He don't, hey, you had the right to supplicate. Philippians chapter 4. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. The Lord supplicated with his Father with strong supplication. He said, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Paul said, Lord, who art thou? I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutes, heart kick against the prick. Lord, what do you have me do? That's a scary thought, ain't it? Well, if you took your life and said, Lord, what do you have me do? And he told you. Rock rope. Now the decision is made. I've told you a hundred times. What do you have to offer the Lord? What do you have to offer the Lord? You do? Romans 12. Hold on to Psalm 2.
Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Not a dead one. A living. You can present your body to God. We hate it when uh, Sut died, but Bonnie now can present herself to the Lord. She's not under her husband any longer. And he'll treat her just as anybody wants to be treated, faithfully. What can you do with your body? What does it say you can? Now, it says, present your body a living sacrifice, and you'll just live and have good things happen, and you'll be wealthy. And all things will just be cool. Is presenting your body acceptable with God, unto God? Yes. And it's what kind of service? Reasonable. Reasonable. Huh. Reasonable. Number one, Romans 5. Verse uh, 9. <clears throat> Much more than being now justified by his blood. Somebody shed his blood for me. Somebody lived a life that ought not die. Somebody that lived on, on earth that really and truly loved the Father with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength. Kept all the commandments. Literally loved the Lord. And was hated by most all men. He was the white hat, not the black hat. As he lived, he looked into the cup of wrath and realized that when he died, he was going to hell. And the wrath there would be overwhelming. And yet he let the Lord do whatever his will was. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The scripture said that his body would lay there and rest in hope. For he had come out of hell. And if he comes out of hell, Jerry's forgiven. I can never go in the grave. I can never go into hell. I can never go into wrath. He did it for me. I trust him. Romans 5 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from what? Through him. 1 Thessalonians. How many chapters in First Thessalonians? Okay. Uh, what's some importance in, in the letter of First Thessalonians? What's a good chapter you know? All right. So let's see what begins to establish here. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. For they themselves of us uh, show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turn to God from your idols to serve a living and true God. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which... Delivered. Say it. E-D. Which delivered us from the wrath to come. Correct? Yes. Okay. Chapter 2, verse 18. Wherefore... We would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once again, but Satan hindered us. Why? Because he wanted to let the Thessalonians know you've been delivered from the wrath to come. The devil don't want you to know you're delivered from the wrath to come. Verse 19, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? The devil didn't want Paul to have joy and rejoicing and uh, hope or joy. Why? 
are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Now that's the second coming. But somebody's in his present at his second coming. Well, let's read on. For you are our glory and joy. Chapter uh, 3, verse 13. To the end he may establish your hearts, unblameable in holiness, before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with what? How many? All his saints. Chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw not, even as others which have no hope. Was Paul alive when he wrote this? Was he printing that he had hope? Was he printing that there were some people alive didn't have any hope? That's what bothered them. That's why I bought people bother, get bothered at funerals. At funerals, they become human, a human in the fact that there are vulnerabilities there. Funerals make you feel bad about yourself. That's why when you see a heart operation on TV and you see that thing quivering and you're like, don't take much for that thing to work, does it, or quit. You know, and then you hear about somebody sick and you think about your health. Don't you kid yourself. You've been thinking about COVID for two years almost. And every time you hear somebody sick, you think about your mortality. That's terrorism. And terrorism domestic. And it's treasonous. I ain't afraid to say that on the air. It's treason. Now watch. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Don't sorrow. Be happy. What was that uh, uh, group that, be happy. And that music you'd always tap with, be happy. Yeah. 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe he's seated up there? Yes. yes. Then if he's seated up there, your life is hidden. Right. We believe Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus would God bring with him. They're coming. And you know what? It might be today. The beast ain't here, folks. The will of God for all men to be saved. The beast ain't here. Sometimes we think a beast is here, <laughs> but the beast ain't here. The beast is going to make people take a mark. We're not associated with that in any form, fashion, of any kind whatsoever. We're not in Daniel's 70th week. We're not part of the tribulation. We're not in it. Is it coming? You bet you it's coming. Is this stuff going on or is preparing something? Yeah, I believe it's part of the perilous times of 2 Timothy 3.1. That don't mean I have to kill my joy. That don't mean I have to be sad. Why should I be rejoicing? Because I'm saved. Salvation. Do you realize what the book of Psalm tells you in chapter 10? Hold here just a minute. Psalm 10. I'm missing a passage. I missed. Let's see. Hang on just a minute. some reason I'm not seeing it. George, you know where it says, let the redeemed say so? Well, put it on top of your head. <laughs> well, why did I not see that? I had it. I apologize to you. It escaped me. The Bible says that uh, God is in 
is good and God is righteous. Uh, Kathy, do you see it back there? Maybe it is 107. That's it. I was looking, I was, the two was throwing me. 107. Yeah, that's I'm getting close. You see, now, what, what we use that verse, but I want to use verse 1 with it. Psalm 107, 1. Give thanks unto the Lord. Are you busy angry or are you giving thanks? Paige got a lot to be thankful for. She's out of the hospital. She's feeling better. Harold uh, is healthy now. He can work again. He's th he should be thankful for that. I mean, hey, that, no, that just, hey. But here's what it says. Give thanks to the Lord for he is what? Yeah. Now, the world's blaming a lot of things on God. Why did he let this happen? Why are children dying? Why is this? Why is that? God. The God of this world going, yeah, give it to him. Give it to him. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth how long? Forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you redeemed? Yes. According to the Bible in Ephesians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, you're redeemed. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, Colossians 1, 14. If we're redeemed, what shall we say? The Lord is good. His mercy endureth forever. Do you realize how much mercy it takes for the Lord to go 2,000 years in this evil world? Peter called it long-suffering. Right? Paul says, put all bitterness, wrath, and anger away from you. Be thankful. Rejoice. Are you with me? Thessalonians again. Here's what I rejoice in. I'm walking around in the evil world, but there's a good possibility I might get out of here. I know I'm going to get out of here one way or another. If I go to sleep, then I'm asleep in the Lord. I don't have to worry about it. He's there. He's got me. I got a body waiting for me, and I got my life up there. But what if I'm alive and things aren't going too hunky-dory? Where do we get that word, hunky-dory? The guy said heck on the Skype uh, this morning. I said, who is heck? Is that a slang for hell? I guess it is. Oh, heck. Oh, well, he didn't want to say, oh, hell, so he said, oh, heck. Okay. So here I am, and I'm in great anticipation, great fear. Everywhere I turn, something's going wrong. I have no safety around me. I can't even go in my house and be safe because I might have got out and got gas, forgot to wash my hands, and got it on a gas pump. The stuff doesn't dwell everywhere, but it dwells a lot of places. I talk to somebody, they spit on me and don't even know they're spitting on me. Anxiety reigns. But wait a minute. God doesn't know. Doesn't. Has God saved us? Yes. Is He worthy of us telling how good and merciful He is? Yes. Is He not a. Well, Psalm chapter 1 and 2 tells me, but I want to read this in Thessalonians. Verse 15 For this we say unto you, by who? So this isn't Paul just spouting off something. He brought up some kind of doctrine. For this we say in you, word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain in the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. I will not be alive here and stopping the action of God. That's the greatest thing. Because in Revelation, what stops happening is, they ask under the altar, they've died, and they said, Lord, how long will it be before you let us Come out. And he said, not till the rest of your brethren are killed. Folks, you couldn't mix that doctrine up with that if you wanted to. 
We which are alive and remain shall not what? Prevent. Prevent. We will not prevent God waking them up with a shout. It'll be on God's time. Whatever time He wants. When that time comes in history, wake up, we're going. And down he'll come with all the people that went to sleep in the Lord. Right? Yes. Well, why are they going down? We which are alive and remain should be caught up together with them. We could actually be caught up to meet the Lord. But it don't matter. If you succumb to a spider, virus, gunshot, car wreck, you're still going to the Lord, ain't you? If you make your choice. If you can right now trust Him. Watch, Ephesians 1. There might be somebody listening to me on the internet that's never actually heard this truth. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, uh, 12. That we should be the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. Let the redeemed say so. In whom you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Uh, the, the word truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also you believed you were what? Sealed. With that Holy Spirit promise. Did God say it happened to you? Yes. Then you got it. It's written. Okay. So, 1 Corinthians 15. A day in Saul of Tarsus' life changed his eternal destiny forever. He was a Jew, Benjamin, working for whatever God would give him for his good works and the law and all the things he did in the tradition of the Jews. He said it profited him to be in a Jewish religion tradition because it was gained to him. First Corinthians, I hear preachers say, I want to be a preacher. Why do you want to be a preacher for? Well, you know, I know what you want to be a preacher for. You want to live the high life. You don't want to have to work. You want to preach. That way you get paid. People give you money. And you'll have a big church. They give you a parsonage. They'll do all kinds of things for you. I want that kind of work. Well, okay. Why don't you read Paul and see how it is. 1 Corinthians 15, he said, All Asia have forsaken me. They stoned him to death in Acts 14. They took him to jail in Acts 16. They put him on a ship. Put him in prison in Acts 28. Time of his departure, he died a miserable death from what I heard. Like Peter. Peter hung upside down on a cross. He said, I'm not going to hang on a cross the way my Lord did. Turn me upside down. One, one apostle, you know what he said? I've been waiting for this to happen. I rejoice in this day. You don't hear many people say that. I just can't wait to get up. I hope get killed today. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. It had to be preached to them, and they had to receive it. If you keep in memory what I preached to you, unless you believe in vain, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. Saul of Tarsus didn't believe he had any sins. He didn't. Touching the rights of the law, blameless. Died for our sins according to Scripture. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to Scripture. That's the way God saved you. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians 4. Amen. Verse 3, but if our gospel be hid, our gospel is the one you trusted. Our gospel will be hid, hid to them that are lost. When's there ever been a day in your life when you're lost? People used to get mad at me over the fact that I trusted the Lord May the 17th, 1984. Say, how'd you know 
that you did. Because I knowed. I needed it. It was something that meant something to me. Amen. Our gospel be his hid to them are lost, in whom the gods world blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Lord, why do you let Satan blind? Because they don't want the truth. Why did you let Israel kill the Lord? Because they didn't want the Lord. Why did you do all that, Lord? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 5, that your face should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. Nor the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the, hidden, the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. God wanted to glorify us. And so when the Son came from the Father, He left glory. Came into the womb of a woman, lived there nine months, came out in the world, was diapered, circumcised, kept the law. At 12 years old, he could confound the Pharisees reading in the temple. At 30 years old, he got baptized by John and began a ministry, teaching 12 men to do a ministry because he was fixing to die and leave this world. Why would he die? They had no king. They wanted Caesar instead of him, and they didn't want him because they didn't like him, and they killed him. Peter then preached, you killed the Messiah, you killed the Holy One, you crucified Him. If you'll repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Paul comes along, a haughty little Jew, high-minded. One day the Lord, boom, knocks him down and said, Lord, who art thou? And he said, I'm Jesus, and thou persecute. Hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he said, I'm going to send you forth to the Gentiles into the world to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan, death, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And so Paul says, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Not that he, we killed him. He died for our sins, according to Scripture and was buried and rose again the third day. If you can trust that, God seals you with the salvation that's there. Amen? Amen. I appreciate you.